Good morning. Good morning. Warm well, welcome to all our family and friends that are joining us on this live stream of our Mass on the sixth Sunday of Easter. We're happy that you can be part of our family as we worship God together. And this is the first Sunday that I get a chance to look at all of your beautiful faces because over this last few days, uh, very secretively, some parishioners came and they placed their pictures in the pews. So Father George and I now can look out and we can see your beautiful faces and all the parishes and I feel like romper room and I see, I, I see Bobby, I see Jimmy, <laughs> and I see Gemma. But this is a, a great, great, uh, beautiful gift that you've given to Father George and myself as I celebrate my fifth anniversary to the ordination to the priesthood. And Father George is celebrating his 25th anniversary. So we give thanks to God for all of you. So let us begin this Mass. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. And in place of the penitential rite he, during this Easter season, we're going to bless the holy water and do what's called the sprinkling rite. Normally when we would have Easter, we would go up and down the aisles and sprinkle holy water on all of you when you would be attending here. But this is the first day that I see you, I see your pictures, so we're going to bless your pictures and your families. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled upon us as a memorial of our baptism. May he graciously renew us, that we may remain faithful to the Spirit whom we have received. Lord God, in your mercy be present to your people who keep vigil on this most sacred night, and for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption. Graciously bless this water, for you have created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy. For through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you've renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received, and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now with joy in our hearts, let us sing the Gloria together.
Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that we relive in remembrance, we may always hold to do what we, in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowd paid attention to what was said by Philip. When they heard it and saw the signs he was doing, for unclean spirits crying out in a loud voice came out of many possessed people, and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured, there was great joy in that city. Now when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit, the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God.
reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope, but do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the, of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And the Lord be with you. And with you sir. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lord, Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him, because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live and you will live. On that day you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves them. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal him myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it was five years ago yesterday that I was ordained a priest for the Archdiocese of Chicago. It was a long journey to make it to that point of kneeling before Cardinal Supich, promising my obedience to him and having him ordain me a priest of Jesus Christ. Now, Father George, as you can tell, is a lot older than me. <laughs> no, he's only two years old, two, three years older than me. But he's been ordained for 25 years, so he has much more wisdom and, and much more leadership and guidance as a pastor than I, I do. I've only been ordained for five years, so I'm still considered a baby priest, right? Is that right? With gray hair. But Father George is your pastor here. He's been helping to guide us through this difficult time of this pandemic. He's also been our pastor in guiding us as we've had this merger of having two very distinct communities, but coming together to become one parish, Our Lady of the Lakes Parish. We are all brothers and sisters in Christ. There is no us, there is no them, there's only our brothers and sisters in Christ. 
It's important for us to remember, especially in this time when we are all separated, that we are joined together through our baptism in Jesus Christ. God has called all of us to be one in his family. And at the moment of our baptism, God claimed us for his very self as a very son of God, as a very daughter of God through our baptism. And an indelible mark was left upon our soul that changed us for all of eternity. That mark will be with us forever. That we are a Christian. We must show that we are a Christian in every way possible. First and foremost, to our own family. That we love our spouse, that we love our children, that our children respect our parents. That we love each other as a parish of Our Lady of the Lakes. Because we are one family. Even though we have two different locations of our church, I think now now more than ever during this pandemic, we realize that we really are truly the family of God. All around the world, no one has been able to enter into their specific local parish. But in spirit, we come together. And it's so beautiful to see all of your faces and the pews here. Also at St. Peter's, they have the same so it's beautiful to see that and what a gift that you've given Father George and I to, uh, to encourage us during this time as we know that we're coming to the light at the end of this tunnel of being separated. But I want to shift my focus to the very first reading in today's readings on the sixth Sunday of Easter it's from the reading from the Acts of the Apostles. And in this, actually, in this particular reading... I'm skipping over to the daily mass here. It's actually the second reading from the letter of St. Paul. It says, Beloved, sanctify Christ as the Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope. But do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, Those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. We are constantly called to live out our vocation as a Christian. It's a call to be holy. It's a call to become great saints while we live on this earth. I want to share just a little story of my own experience many years ago before I was in the seminary, but coming back into the church, having a conversion through Medjugorje, and making a decision to start going to Mass again. I was actually a waiter at a restaurant in downtown Chicago. And as I started this new job, we were down in the, uh, the locker room for all the servers as we were getting ready for our shift. And uh, obviously the men and the women had different locker rooms. But as I was putting on my uniform for that very first weekend shift, and I had my shirt open, my miraculous medal of Medal of the Blessed Virgin Mary was hanging around my neck. And one of the other servers saw this. And the server's name was Maurice. And Maurice had a very visceral reaction when he saw this image of the Blessed Mother around my neck. And he said, are you Catholic? And I said, yes, I am. And he became very violently expression of anger within him directed at me because I was Catholic. And he says, do you want to know what I think about the Catholic Church? And I said, not really. I said, you have to find out what works for you. And I continued to get ready for my shift and walked away. But I walked away at that moment because I knew that that was not the time to evangelize. He was blinded by his anger for whatever reason. So I walked away because the Holy Spirit was calling me to remain silent in that moment. But the Holy Spirit also put it on my heart that I needed to get to know my coworker, Maurice, to find out why he was so angry with the church, why he had such a visceral reaction when he saw this image of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So over the next ensuing few weeks, I made it a habit to go and to talk with Maurice and to spend time with him and to get to know him and to find out what's going on in his life. And it was then that I found out that his mother had died of cancer. And when he was a little boy, Maurice and his mother would often watch a movie called The Song of Bernadette. 
Now, The Song of Bernadette was a movie back in the 40s or 50s that was made about the apparitions of Our Lady of Lourdes. He was Catholic. He himself is Catholic. He was baptized. His mother had a great faith in the Lord, and she had a, a love for the Blessed Virgin Mary. And he would always watch this movie every year with his mom. But when she died of cancer and she was taken away from him, he felt that God had taken away everything in his life from him and his anger was directed at the one thing he knew, and that was his faith in the Catholic Church. And over time, as I got to know him and, and cared about him as a, as a brother in Christ, we had a period of time where Maurice went missing. He didn't show up for his shifts at work. We didn't know where he went to. And Maurice had gone on a drug binge and had completely missed work for almost a week. And then mysteriously, he reappeared. And I went up to Maurice a few days after he had come back to work. And I said, Maurice, I was so worried about you. I called you several times. I didn't hear about you. I didn't know where you were at. And I said, I want you to have something. He's like, what do you want to give me? So I gave him a little box, and I said, I don't know if you'll wear this, but, you know, my whole faith of believing in Christ came and that coming back into the church came through our Blessed Mother. And I still wear this miraculous medal reminding me of our Heavenly Mother, how she brought me back to her son. And I want to give this to you so that when you wear it, I will know that Mary will keep her mantle wrapped around you and protect you and keep you safe. And to my surprise, he immediately ripped it open, the package, and put it around his neck, right there in the restaurant. <laughs> and I remember the last few days that I was working at that, uh, that restaurant, I remember Maurice coming up to me, I think it was just those last few days, and he said, I want you to see something. And he opened up his shirt. He showed me the medal again. And he said, you're going to become a priest one day, aren't you? I said, how did you know? He said, I could see it in your heart. Brothers and sisters, we have to show our faith in all times. Sometimes we have to remain silent because the one that we love will not accept the words that we have to give to them. When the Holy Spirit guides us, he will anoint our words and he will show us the path to help evangelize even our own family. For those of you who are struggling within your own family because your spouse is questioning why are you even watching this Mass on TV? It's a waste of your time. Pray for them. Be that light of Christ in your family. Pray together. Pray for the conversion. And allow the Holy Spirit to guide you to share the light of Christ to all those around you. Amen. Let's now please stand for the prayers of the faithful. So now let us proudly profess our faith by reciting the Nicene Creed together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified and in Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to our Lord to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, with great joy in our hearts, let us offer up our prayers to our Heavenly Father. For the church, that she may lead people to love Christ and to keep his commandments, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who govern and exercise authority, that they may bring peace and justice to the nations of the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the salvation of the world, that missionaries may banish darkness and despair from all hearts and minds, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a new evangelization, that we may be able to share with others the reason for the hope we cherish, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those suffering from the virus, those who fear it, for all those who are caretakers, and for the first responders, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have gone before us in death, that they may be raised to the life of the risen Lord, especially those from our parish, our Lady of the Lakes, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of the petitions that have been offered for all the masses throughout the week that we always place on our altar, we now lift them up to you, Heavenly Father, and we ask that you pour your Son's precious blood upon them to bring them to your eternal kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of us here gathered together virtually and here inside the church, we now take a moment to consecrate ourselves to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, asking Mary to wrap her mantle around us, our families, and our parish, to lead us always closer to her son Jesus as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for listening to all our prayer petitions, but most especially those intentions we hold deep within our hearts. And we lift up all of these intentions to you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.